Good news, everyone. The war crimes are working exactly as intended, but we'll take a look at that in a second. Obviously, last episode, we sort of had a little bit of an issue with the vampire mod specifically, and I've actually found a way to fix that. So, there's a tool, uh, if you don't want to save game edit this, is there's a tool available on the Rimworld forums, which I'll put a link to in the description or in a top comment or somewhere. Which essentially allows you to open up your save game, create a copy of your vampire that's bugged out if you had the same issue that I had last episode. And then you can just basically manually remove all of the health issues. That way you start with a fresh slate. I have tested this a couple of different times doing a couple of different things. That seems like the most straightforward and easiest way. If people need an actual tutorial, message me on Discord or something. Because some of you might have ended up with that same issue as me. But I think it's restricted to maybe just the gargoyle vampires. Either way, we have ourselves... A new, fresh, what well, sort of jump bundle copied, but without the uh, without the other vampire powers that he had being a gargoyle there. So we've got a fresh light. He is still level 32, which I'm not sure if that increases the XP you need per level. So say between level 1 and level 2, it might just be 20 XP, but between level 2 and level uh, 3, it might be 40 XP, for example. I don't know whether this is going to make it harder on ourselves. doesn't really matter. We'll consider that being the price that we pay for, uh, for fully resetting things here. But I can confirm all his powers are gone. So he's now capable of building. He's actually a useful character that's not going to crash our game and reduce our frame rate. So the good news I was talking about with the war crimes as well is, A, the prison works as intended. One of you sent me a message as well saying that I can adjust the jobs prisoners are capable of doing in the mod settings as well. So I've gone ahead and done that. They're now capable of doing everything that they're not restricted by with their personality. So if, you know, a prisoner spawns in and capable of uh, skilled labor, you can't make them do skilled labor. They're still being capable of it at that. But we're not restricted. So now we've got prisoners. If I, on positive here, I actually might be doing that. But now we've got prisoners, as long as they're motivated, which is determined by the uh, sort of happy face there above his head that you can see. You motivate them by having wardens, you know, check in on them, beat them around a little bit, that type of thing. But I literally had earlier, before I was starting off here, just as things were starting up, we have prisoners growing uh, their food out of the decomposing corpses of other prisoners. I think we've more or less, well, I was going to say hit peak war crimes, but honestly, as terrible as this is, we are nowhere near close. A lot of you have been asking for some of the more additional war crimes mod as well, because a lot of people seem kind of interested in that, along with all of this, like, super, super unethical stuff. So, ideally, self-sustaining prison, where we have a load of... The useless prisoners will just straight up lobotomize or, or make them into just meat bags, essentially blood bags for our vampire uh, prison wardens. And then with the more skilled ones, we'll let those guys have a bit more freedom, but we want it to be self-sustaining. We don't want that to have the wardens come in here sowing crops for the prisoners. That's irrelevant. These, these are nothing to them, right? Similarly, we want them to be able to produce their own power. We've got that, uh, what is that, that mod where we could basically have them cycle all day. Don't know if we'll have enough prisoners to be able to do that, or, or whether or not we'll get diminishing returns, because I doubt you can make more power than what you're using to feed them within the first place. If that makes sense? Otherwise, it's just, you know, 100% efficiency. So, we'll cross that as we get there. Right now, we've only got two colonists, as I talked about, two prisoners there. The only concern I had last episode is that they can't go through regular doors, obviously, because they're prisoners. They can go through these stall doors, though. So, what I've kind of wanted to do, instead of having, like, a big dedicated freezer with doors that would obviously stop the heat getting through, because these don't stop the heat getting through, instead we can use the, uh, the, the refrigeration mod and actually refrigerate things with that. It's not fantastically useful, because it means we will have to have, like, uh... No, we could use... No, passive cooler still won't work either, because obviously they, the heat will get out. We can use these. They do take up components from steel, but they don't use up too much power, and we've got plenty of, like, geothermal vents, and we've got some pretty OP endgame, uh, power resources as well so i'm not too concerned i think we'll be all right now one thing i'm going to do as well i don't think the difficulty has been particularly high we've basically built this prison without too much of a threat obviously we've been you know literally had colonists instantly killed from it from occasional things so what i'm going to do we're going to go to hildegard epic which means that you get less minor threats like you know the the event where your your battery blows up or whatever the hell it is we'll get less diseases we'll get less of the annoying shit like heat waves and volcanic winters this is going to hit us with big, hard raids. As it says there, she'll send more big threats while causing less in incidents. Less annoyances, more actual genuine threats to the colony, I think is what we're actually after here. So we're going to go over to Savage Hildegard. Not Merciless. As I've talked about before, Merciless is either big old raids that are challenging, or you just get drop pods fall on you and you instantly lose. We want something that is sustainable, but still incredibly challenging, which is kind of what I'm hoping we can get here. Uh, I don't mind losing, you know, I'm not looking to keep all our colonists alive, or if Jop dies himself, that we can still persevere on. But the point is, we, we still need to actually have this threat here without just what we're doing right now, where we're uh, building up without any much of a threat. Speaking of which, we do have some kind of high priority shit to get done here. So we've got massive holes in the kill bots right now, which obviously is going to reduce how effective this is. But now that Jop can actually build, uh, I, in theory he can build now that we've, we've reduced some of those uh, gargoyle buffs that were making it just, just horrible to try and play. Let's see if this actually works. 
Because it, it has removed that power. We'll see if it was that. Oh, yeah, it definitely looks like it's working, huh? Yeah, look at that. That's working absolutely as intended. That's fantastic. Let's just force him to just get a bit of a better... Oh, my God. This is so good. Like I said, if you guys are having that same issue, I'll, I'll get a tutorial up or, or put something on Discord just to talk you through how to uh, how to deal with this as well there. My God, that's fantastic. Uh, by the way, the sun's coming up, so you might want to go to bed, like, super quick, my friend. Cool. What's wrong with Don Trumpian? What will happen, my friend? Are you all right? Go juice addiction blood loss. What? Moving none? Blood pumping is at 80%. Oh, because of his blood loss. And then he's also got consciousness 51% because of his go juice addiction. Um, I think I'm just happy to sacrifice him, you know, have him lying around a couple of days until he gets over that. Now, the other th important thing to do, now that we're going to have these, you know, bigger raids, bigger threats, whatever else, hopefully more people actually attacking the base, which means, you know, obviously more prisons for us as well. We actually need to get this hospital built as soon as possible. So this was kind of the area I was planning out the hospital with, and this is all going to connect and be basically one gigantic building in the end, ideally, because it's kind of, I, I, I do fall into the trap quite frequently if I'm like a house here, a house here, a house here, and they all run between them. We want just one gigantic mega structure, like a true pop proper prison i think would be you know incredible so that's what we're going to go for this time and this will all build into something as well we need to finish off this wall here too so who's our daytime builder i can never remember uh we've got oh man it's alucard now uh you're also our cook and to be honest i think i'd rather you cook and he is actually building right now finish off marvel tiles and whatever else so we'll leave him to that as long as we've got enough meals in storage he will actually you know default to uh default to building the tiles there. I'm just thinking, do you want to change a simple meal job here? So cooking four simple meals. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Obviously, Jill and Pickle don't eat. So actually, we've only got five. Cooking 80 meals. Eight meals between... Uh, let, let's unpause it at a bit of a lower threshold. So we'll say unpause at like 40 instead. That way, when half our meals are depleted, they'll cook, you know, 40 more. I think that's safer. Let's also copy this over. I think we did have a link build, but I kind of ballsed it up there. Oh no, it's still linked. Look at that. Hey, there we go. That solved our problem then. Sure, we'll do that for a while. Now, we don't have a backup chef either anymore now that we've lost uh, Mal, I think it was. Yeah, li literally just Ali card. So maybe focusing the cook on actually cooking isn't such a bad idea, I think. I do want to try out the um, the Advanced War Crimes one. I know a lot of people are interested in that. I'm, I'm interested in that because I've actually never played with that before. Whereas some of these I've, I've obviously touched on in previous series. What do I want to go for next? Powered armor is 6,000 research. And I feel like we don't necessarily have the resources for that right now. I mean, just a quick glance at our stockpile kind of shows, I mean, what would we need for that, like, components, which I can't even see, to be honest with you, well, we've got 34 components, okay, that's not terrible, how much steel we got, 814 steel, and we've got 254 plastic steel, there's certainly not enough to have power armor on everybody, and there was a comment that said as well, the bone armor is garbage, even though it kind of suits the aesthetic of being this spooky, you know, undead prison, that was the whole reason why we lost Mal. That's the whole reason why when Mal was shot in the head by a sniper, he died instantly. Because he literally just had a sort of mangled, old, rotten bone mask protecting his head. So we could do with getting some real armor for these boys instead. I, as much as it sucks that we're going to lose our aesthetic, I would like to keep our people alive. I think living definitely comes slightly before aesthetic. So, uh, maybe power armor. I know we need Devil Strand as well for that. Though, so actually, there's no point getting that until we've got Devil Strand. So let's actually research in Devil Strand then in the meantime. So the other thing I've just quickly done as well is set up particular areas for our people. So vampires, I want to be a bit more restrictive because obviously we've had it, especially during early on in the series where I didn't really know how it worked. Vampires that you're just catching fire and dying. So they are allowed to basically cover the whole base, which obviously includes a fair amount of sunlight. But I've kind of restricted how far they can go beyond the walls. They don't really need to go beyond that, especially as enemies are obviously going to come to us. They're not really going to be hunting either. They don't need food. Our regular colonists, our ghouls should be forced to hunt for their own food, I think. That's not something a vampire would stoop to do, huh? Then we've got our wardens as well. They're allowed everywhere but the prison work areas. So this area will have some work and obviously recreation. We'll have their kitchen, their dining room, and then, of course, this area too. So otherwise, our wardens are going to be growing the prisoners' food for them. And that's just not how this should work. Those prisoners need to fight for themselves here. And then, of course, prisoners are restricted to only the prison, which we I think we can quickly see by going like that. There you go. Everything glowing orange there is where the prisoners are allowed. We can obviously expand that out a little bit more by using stall doors rather than the regular doors. But for now, that kind of works. Prisoners don't really have anything to do. I feel like maybe we should just stick down like a growing zone or something so they can actually, you know, any excess growing that they've done, we could maybe have our colonists pick up. So one thing I actually did a couple of series ago during the Medieval Rim is we had a sort of uh, zombie area to our base which freaked out the regular colonists and then we had the regular colonists on the other side of the wall but then a slight overlap between the areas so what we could do for example is uh maybe something like this bear with me on this one so we have a regular door on this side and then we'll replace this one with a stall door so that the prisoners can actually get through and use that obviously it's occupied for now but then what you'll want to do is if we go to the zoning area set the warden zone 
slightly to overlap into there, and then we could do the prisoner zone to slightly overlap into there. What we can do with this, then, is also use it as fill it with freezers or something. If we have any extra overlap, we might want to make it also into a big room, too. If we have any extra overlap of food that the prisoners can't use, our wardens can actually collect it and use it for themselves, right? I think that would be not a terrible idea. We've probably got a load of spare SVDs. I didn't realize we had this many. So who else is, um, I mean, to monetize could do with one. Ali Khan has a shotgun, which obviously very, very, very low range. I'm kind of tempted to give Ali Card. Obviously, Don Trumpian should have a shot. Uh, one of these SVDs as well. We're going to get into equip that. So Ali Card, I'm going to flip over to SVD also. That we've essentially got the sniper squad. And like I said, the fact that we're making the killbox is so massive is going to benefit us because if we look at Ali Card's current range, it won't reach from one side of the killbox to the other. In fact, it will barely cover halfway. Yet with these ridiculous snipers, those things have just an absurd range. That's like a quarter of the map. So we could actually make this a lot longer as well. We could literally pull this killbox right the way down to here. If enemies turn up with pistols, shotguns, even some regular range rifles. They're not going to be able to hit us, and we're going to be able to annihilate them. So I think that could be something fun. Kind of a little bit maybe meta gamey as well. But hey, we'll, we'll see how hard these threats truly come in. And of course, if it does get too easy for us, we'll just uh, crank up the difficulty. Now, what I'd like to point out, we do still have the frame rate drop. But it's nowhere near as bad as what we had last time. That's just because jump is quick, right? It, it, certain quick characters, when they go above a certain speed threshold, that the move routing generally can't keep up with their movement but as you can see here it's at least not going at one frame a second so even though it's not completely solved the problem it is definitely working which is more that can be said for last episode so what can the prisoners grow now apparently they can't grow skilled crops so things like heel root things like devil strand i think it's sort of the same as planting in a hydroponics basin that they're limited in what crops they can grow we'll try lentils because obviously lentils are super super powerful in fact we'll probably expand that out the whole way we'll give them a nice varied diet here so we'll go for like something along this line and then we'll go for corn because i guess it's so long lived that wouldn't we would need to worry about the sort of urgencies of storage like we are right now and then this area ideally i'd love to fill the whole thing with these just corpse planters because i think that's horrible and like incredibly macabre and we'll keep the prisoners in line but for now you know it's, it's kind of just a waste of space not filling this out with something like rice i guess for the more immediate food um we could even split this down into sub areas of us so instead of just having the whole thing as rice we could split that in half put down another zone and go for some like bean uh what could the, what would they like what would they like that's outside of that we got any like crops plants anything pincushion cactus uh what does that do Nutrition 0 0.25, 0 0.25 on that one. Um, corn is the most nutritious at 0 0.3. I'm kind of tempted just to put something else down. Fruit barren tree that grows olives and it's not destroyed when picked. That'd be good for the long term then in that case. Let's not worry about those. Let's go for like some beans. There you go. You can have a nice varied diet there, prisoners. Yeah, definitely can't argue that that is infinitely better than yesterday where we get one frame every half a minute. So one thing we need to do as well is probably spend his first point. So we are now a Pidj Pidjavica, whatever the hell that is. Um, so we've got Blood. Last time I consume blood from the nearby ground. So I assume that's just when colonists like bleed out, for example, or when we get into prison riot and there is just literal blood that you know you normally just clean up. I guess you can just drink it off the floor like some sort of fucking animal. Okay, that's fine. We've also got this one as well, which sounds awesome. Uh forces the target to vomit some of their blood on the ground. I assume that gives blood loss, but doesn't actually cause damage or pain or anything like that. We've got stem the tide, stops all blood loss on target. Sounds just super useful for capturing prisoners. And then we've also got unstoppable tide as well. I'm gonna go for this tree. We've seen what the war form does, and honestly, the war form is massively, massively disappointing. I was kind of assuming it would be this just massive, unstoppable, like, Hulk creature for a while. It is, but it turns out it just gives him health, doesn't actually affect his offensive value. Sort of punches like a child. Let's go for blood, and we'll just work our way up this tree. So, what is that one then? Suck it off the ground. Do we have any blood that we can test that out on? Um, I'm going to assume not. I can't see any. I'm looking, like, round the kill box, maybe, like, round... The uh, hospital area. Now, nah, our cleaners are just too good, unfortunately. Next raid we go. I've, I've definitely got to sort of test that one out. House. So, this hospital. What can we research for? If this is where I really need the, the you know, the, the research mod that lets us add a search bar and find out what we want here. Because I want to find out what other, other stuff is good for a hospital, but I don't really know what some of these mods adds. Um, we definitely want, what about like more linkables? Ah, there we go. Right, that's it. Surgical lamp and surgical instruments. Both will be super useful. We are going to focus on hospital this episode, but I'm going to wait for Devil Strand first, just because we might as well start growing that before we, you know, start more research, rather than miss out on all that time spent growing. We've got that other SVD as well. Who was I going to give that to? It was Don Trumpian, right? Um, let's also go and quickly set that one up. I'm kind of expecting another raid any time now. It seems like ages since we've had a super powerful raid. Where's Don Trumpian? Um, he's already supposed to have an SVD. What did you do with it, my man? Just pick it up? Nope, he's just not bothered. Oh, maybe... Uh, 
No, what the fuck? We had a spare one. Why's it gone? Oh, we just didn't actually pick it up in the end, huh? I guess I must have set him to do something else. There you go. Go and grab that one. Perfect. Problem solved. Then we've got a spare one, so we'll give that to, like I said, I think Alucard, just so we've got the range advantage, especially. So you can have that one, my friend. Where are you? Alucard. We'll switch you over to an SVD. We have armor-piercing rounds for all of these as well, so they are like, super strong. Like, a long-range, high-caliber rifle that's armor-piercing. I think we're going to annihilate the next raid that turns up. I've, I've said that, and now I've cursed us, haven't I? For the time being, then, while I'm still building the prison itself, we're going to let all of our wardens go everywhere instead, because that includes this prison area that obviously would normally be restricted to stop them working there. What we'll have to do, just for the time being, while we are still building things, is just stop that from sewing. Otherwise, our, you know, our wardens, rather than building things or working on their own farms, will start working on the prisoner farms, and obviously that's kind of a waste of time, because we really don't need that much food for this many people. The prisoners won't have anything else to do, which is why I'm happy to have them just, like, farming all day. There we go. That actually means we're going to get some work done here. Does this count as... This counts as outdoors. Why? Is it because embrasures don't count as walls? I mean, chances are it's just unroofed. Yeah, no, it's actually unroofed. That would suck if embrasures don't actually make a, a room, a, you know, a finished room. So let's get this done and just make sure that that's actually not the case. I think someone's already delivering resources here. Cool. So now we actually need to turn this into some sort of recreation room because our prisoners are just wandering around completely bored, low mood, whatever else. That's fine. We don't want them to be super, super happy. Otherwise, you know, they might get daring. They might step out of line. But we will still give them some recreation for the time being. Um, let's go to Joy Recreation. There it is. I couldn't remember what the hell the cap category was called. We need more wood, but we've got enough cloth here. I think a billiards table is okay. Like a couple of billiards tables, maybe a poker table. Dartboard seems like a horrible idea in prison. Similarly, billiards table, like a, a snooker ball and a sock, seems like a, just a generally terrible idea. Same with poker table. Oh, man. You know what? It's not going to matter. It's rimmed. Let's be honest. They're not going to weaponize the darts and go on a prison escape. Although, if they do, that would be an awesome mod. Let's drop down some uh, Let's drop down some trees. Where's all my Where's all my trees gone? Excuse me? Oh, they're all behind Castle Jilp. Speaking of which, we also do need to work on Castle Jilp. But I think Jilp can reward himself when we've actually got a running prison, huh? How the hell do we make corpse fertilizers? Soil fertilized by blood and flesh with 175% fertility is obviously massive. But we do need that first. Um, let's go over to the, I don't know, the drugs lab. Draw blood from corpse. Obviously, that seems like the first step to doing it. I don't know how we move on to the next one, though. Do we have any more antiseptic corpses? Because that could be fairly useful. Um, Am I blind? Uh, we've got three of the damn things. Oh, we've got four of them. Okay, cool. So we might be able to build a maggot breeding pit, if nothing else here. Yeah, nice. We absolutely can. Where do you want to put that? Do you want the prisoners to tend to the maggots? That seems appropriate, right? I think, that's a, I think that's a fantastic idea. And we could put that anywhere, huh? So this is going to be their recreation slash workroom. Um, what we really don't want is if we had a prison break, this being particularly obscured, we want to be able to shoot down into the prisoners from there. So, I guess we could put it outside. That's fine, right? That works. Um, we'll put it, we'll put it over here for now by the corpse planters. Always keep your corpse planters and your maggot breeders close together. All right, nice. There we go. So, let's start work on the surgical lamp, surgical instruments, and maybe get, oh, what is an advanced multi-analyzer? Speed up your research even more. That sounds like something we should probably get as early as possible. It is 5,000 research. Ah, shit. Now, we, we need a hospital. I'm sorry to do this, but we, we absolutely need this hospital, like, right now, because this is going to get out of hand. Otherwise, if we're constantly researching something else, something else, something else, then a raid will turn up and we just won't be able to save anyone. Or we have a lot of people dying of infections, that type of thing. So I started planning out what we're going to do with the actual prison here. Obviously, we don't want to build it all because we've got two freaking prisoners. So I think it'd be a bit pointless to have uh, all of this turned into a massive, sort of, ready, well-equipped prison when we don't really need it to be. So, one thing I was thinking of as well is this entire prison is going to count as outdoors because we've got stall doors between that and the outside, huh? So, what I might need to do is download the locks mod. This has actually been suggested to me by quite a lot of different commenters and on Discord as well. That apparently allows us to set up certain doors which prisoners are allowed to interact with. I don't know if it will stop the whole building counting as a prisoner. That's my only concern. Because right now, as you can see where the, the, the prison is, huh? If we do that. Um, my concern is that by putting down... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for a second then I thought we were going to have a challenge. A manhunted pack of domestic rabbits have entered the area. How many though? Oh, that's actually a fucking lot, huh? That's actually quite a few. we got 20, 23 domestic rabbits there. I'm pretty sure... Oh man, we've only got snipers. Like, extremely slow firing and slow to reload sniper rifles. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, the, in hindsight, I've, I've started to see... I've started to see a glaring hole in this otherwise... Fairly okay plan, I think. Um, we actually might want to get rid of the door here. Otherwise, they'll sense our colonists are behind the door and they actually won't charge for us. So we'll move that one as well. Um, shit. Well, we'll see how this goes then. Oh, they're, they're actually going straight through the kill box, huh? Fantastic. My god, looks like me's back on the menu, boys. Let's see what we've got. Um, Jilp, can you not get over here? Who, who are we waiting on? We're waiting on 
Uh, Don Trump in. Oh, he's still having his over... He's still having his, uh, withdrawal, isn't he? Sure, he might as well go to bed, because you're not going to be any use during this fight. Anyway, good God, this is going to be something, huh? This is the true... This is exactly why I turned... Oh, yeah, okay, this is what I was worried about. Um, that they've actually stopped trying to attack us because we're behind a door. Okay, Jilp, if you want to come and get rid of the door very quickly. Thank you very much. Alright, that should spawn them back over here. Right, here we go. Yeah, there we go. This is, this is what I was expecting. You know, when I went for Hildegard Epic, specifically downloading a storyteller who sends big epic battles at you for really testing your colony, 23 fucking rabbits. This is what we were after. The true meat grinder test of whether or not colony is ready to call itself a true colony and prison. Good luck. Here we go. They're in. Nice. Didn't stand a goddamn chance. You see that Piccolo even leveled up. Having, oh, you know what? They're making more progress than I expected. I was kind of expecting them all to be completely ground up here. Oh, no, they don't stand a damn chance. We're just annihilating them. We're, like, pinning them to the wall behind them. This is so... It's like Watership Down. <laughs> this is fucked. Okay. I feel like we're fine then. Obviously, with people, might be different, especially if we get powered people, you know, running through with melee weapons or whatever. This many slow fire, like a big group of uh, even slightly, slightly stronger enemies as well. Like, uh, what were those things called? The, the big, those things. That's exactly what I was thinking of, actually. The Gigantolopes, I think they're called. Like, slightly more armored if they come in a big old Manhunter pack. That might be slightly difficult to deal with when we've got this many, like I said, slow firing, slow to reload weapons. My god. That is going to be a lot of meat for a while, huh? It's only 16 dead. We're still waiting on a few others. Uh, I don't think we need this. Job, you might as well go to bed, because you're not even supposed to be awake at this time. Piccola, you might as well piss off as well. This is irrelevant for you guys to be here. I, I don't think we need our top vampires fighting off a rabbit horde. God damn, aero fleets light fire to my rabbits. Okay, go and, go and haul that urgently. Are they actually going to go... No, 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 no. Force, force hauling the rabbits. Go, go, go. Put the fire out. Put the fire out. Oh, God, all that meat. Shit. <laughs> I'm gonna let it burn. Fuck it. I just thought this would be a lot more interesting to see what happened. Um, oh good, our, our boom lope's on fire. And then the rain comes after all the meat's burnt. Well, you live and learn, huh? That's exactly why, in hindsight, we should probably put firefighting back up to number one. We only stopped that because of the fire ship, if you remember. So, that can definitely go back up to uh, top priority for a while, I think. Well, that was interesting. We got some nice rabbit meat. Don Trumpian is once again passed out on the floor, flailing around like a fucking idiot. Good God. But, uh, a couple more meals. Can't complain. And once again, in classic vampire prison style, we're starving to death because, for some reason, we literally just cannot grow enough food. Um, why? It's not like a roof over that. No, it's just taking ages. That volcanic winter seriously has had some kind of horrible knock-on effects, huh? Uh, let's go hunting again. If only there was a, a whole bunch of food delivered straight to our doorstep. I think we should... Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, oh! Oh, that literally turned up... Oh, as the rabbits were burning. Okay, cool. In my confusion about burning rabbit flesh, I forgot to realize that the literal apocalypse had fallen on us. There's a poison ship. I can't afford to do what I did with the last ship and just sit and wait it out for a while. We need to deal with this, like, right now. We do have a mortar, though, which is obviously fantastic. So means we could probably wake them up and actually aggro them to come over to our base without them to worry about it. Now, I was told as well we can get some EMP bullets, which are super, super effective against mechanoids for obvious reasons. Um, maybe if I type in EMP... EMP? What have we got? EMP cartridges. What are those used for? Grenade launchers. Then we've got EMP grenades, which I assume you can just chuck with your hands. What grenades do. Uh, we've also got 40, 40 times 46 EMP grenades, whatever the hell those are. Uh, well, let's check the actual loading bench as well, sort of see whether we can make some EMP ammo. Okay, shotgun ammo EMP is immediately jumping out to me here. The issue is, I'm not really sure I want, you know, doomsday launcher, minigun wielding mechanoids to be that close. Or more specifically... They will be able to hit us before we can hit them. Obviously, we don't want Scythers to get that close. Um, not sure about that one, Chief. I might just see how the armor piercing do, because, of course, they are armored. They are literally made of, of steel or plasteel or whatever other, you know, alloy mechanoids are made of. I'm not an expert in mechanoid construction. Murderous Rage. Oh, good. He's decided to kill to monetize because he's in a bad mood. Of course. Why not? I mean, that's, that's, fully, that's a completely acceptable thing to do there, despite the fact that we have meat on the table. Who's not cooking here? Uh, Alucard. Alucard, get to, get to cooking, my man. Need... Oh, because we don't have enough for one meal. God damn it. That's, I actually did actively remove this one earlier in the episode. I think I might have actually, uh, might have actually done it right there as you guys were watching me. So, um, <laughs> it turns out that was a horrible idea. Calchocula, how about you don't? Oh, God, he's right there. Um, Rabbi, are you being recruited as well? I might have forgot to actually set you to be... Whoops, recruit. There we go. Um... <laughs> Completely forgot about this prison, just sort of kicking around, forcing him to work, but there's no work. Let's like, sweep the floors, sweep them again. Um, what are we going to do now? How am I going to stop this from all kicking off? Ideally, what we need to do, is there an escape route he could go for? Yes, there is. So here's the plan. Run through the freezer. Shit. Run through the freezer. Start moving. 
Pickle, get in there. We're going to drain him. We're going to drain him. We're going to knock him down. We're going to keep draining him until he until he chills the fuck out. Are you okay? What do you do? Just gave him a bit of a punch. Cracked him with his gun barrel. Nothing to worry about that. Don't go back through the freezer where the man's trying to murder you, you weird boy. We're just going to keep draining him until he until he knocks out, I think. Uh, or not. Okay. Uh, can you drain him again? Uh, right. Feed on count. Right. Go. go. No, 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 no. Where are you going? Showering. Feed. Showering. Is he full of blood? Oh, good God. Jilp. Jilp's not full of blood. Jilp, feed on him. Stop this Stop this madman. Where is Jilp? Where is he going? Oh, he's going down through the prison. Demonetized, run. Run, demonetized. You can do it. Okay, I was just noticed that's about the American way. Ooh. Good God. Give me... Okay, stop, stop, stop. Calm. How are we going to do this? Because he's probably going to start... I think Jilp can probably outrun him. There we go. If this is knocking down, I don't know what to do next. I guess we'll just have to punch him up for a bit. Kind of try and beat him up. Stop him. Good God. How much blood have you drained? Can we just drain a bit more? I feel like we're going to kill him at the rate we're going. Blood loss moderate. Okay, try again. Careful, careful. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. We just need to knock him down. Come on. Careful. Yeah, that actually worked. Oh my god. Okay. Big brain. Rescue. Get him up. <sighs> okay. Demonetized your welcome, by the way. To literally save your life there, my man. Holy shit. Well, I like that we've got access to that. Because as we've seen before, like, it works well for hunting. It works well for stopping murderous rampages. All you got to do is drain the blood until they actually can't stand anymore. Which generally works quite well against people who are on murderous rampages. It's not... <laughs> It's not super practical, though, is it? Because obviously, if the vampire's already fed, we might... Is there a way to limit the amount of blood they can drink? Because uh, that would be that'd be kind of fantastic. We'll set that to prisoners. Now we've actually got prisoners. Um, we've got lethal, none, animals, animal lethal, or just sip. Oh, man. I was kind of hoping we could put a limit on it. That way, if we ever get that again, we could use it as a colonist management method. Who are you butchering there, my man? Oh, that's fine. I don't know whether it's... Worth keeping some of these guys kicking around for a bit so that we can see if we can send them into that, that blood feed, especially as we're literally starving. Uh, and also as we're going to have quite big... Oh, no. Breed the maggots. These squirming worms may be disgusting but contain more proteins than a mammal's meals. Great for feeding animals. Humans can eat them but they really hate it. This is, this is advanced war crime. So we could... We could breed maggots using dead corpses... And then feed maggots. It produces 75 maggots. Feed maggots to our prisons. Like, literally give them a diet of maggots. How fucked up can we make this colony, do you think? Just to what degree? How, how many levels deep can we go with this? Picula, I'm going to need you to stop the antiseptic corpse. Uh, my friend. Draft and undraft. We are going to... We're going to make some maggots instead, my guys. Right, breed the maggots. Should we just do that until we've got... Can you do that until you've got X? Uh, until we've got, like... I oh, know how much does it produce? Seventy-five maggots per piece. So we just do it twice, or, or will that do it until it's? I don't really know how this works. Do we need to do it until we've got like one hundred and fifty? Is that how that works? Because it's oh, you can only not do until X if it's a variable output. So like mechanoids, for example, you can't do until X with plastic because they also produce steel and components or whatever else. Um, with this though, seeing as it's only got one output, that should work. Oh, you can also do it with animal corpses. Oh shit. Uh, well then we simply do insect corpses. We can make insect corpses or maggots out of insect corpses. That's incredible. That's so, so useful. And actually, kind of in the base game, this is kind of OP because it's a really good way of disposing of corpses uh, in a way that also produces you with something that's fairly useful as well because animals aren't going to give a shit if they eat maggots, huh? That's kind of cool. Okay. Um, in that case, Piccula, my friend, stop stuffing that corpse and turn it into an antiseptic corpse. Instead, my friend, we need to uh, feed, the, feed the maggot breeder. That's going to be the name of this episode, Feeding the Maggot Breeder. Go. Yes, say a prayer, everyone. This is this is exactly the height of this series. This is exactly what I wanted out of this. Come on, let's do it. Here we go. Pray to pray to whatever gods you got to pray to. Jerry King, Elrang, the Dark Gods themselves, Cthulhu. Do it. This is fucking vile. And what? That's just instant, is it? Oh, good. Breeding maggots with corpse. That's it. We we've done it. Oh, and you actually get is that? That's surely that counts as tainted, huh? It doesn't count as tainted. Am I blind? Wait, what? Oh, tainted. Tainted, tainted. Tactical vests don't become tainted. I mean, that's fine by me. It's a shame about the rest of it, but uh, that, that completely threw me off for a second then that, that maybe the mod was kind of bugged out in that it wasn't recognizing corpse clothes as tainted, so when you fed them to that, but okay, Count Chocolate's about to die. Why? Uh, oh, because we've literally drained all of his fucking blood out of him. We like a transfusion, because we've got blood packs kicking around, don't we? Yeah, we've got a blood pack there. Uh, Piccula, can you... No, we can, we can kill him. Uh, we can't give him a blood transfusion, which does kind of suck. Maybe it's in the operations tab, seeing as, you know, it is fairly an operation. Transfer blood pack. 
Oh, that actually does work. Nice. Okay, let's give him a transfusion. I was literally joking about that. Uh, but I didn't realize we could we could actually do that. Do the maggots need to be kept frozen? Um, apparently so. They're not going to... The credence human corpse. Oh my god, it actually counts as just a fucking meal. We've got humans fed on... Maggots fed on humans that we're then going to feed to our prisoners. And then we could turn those into more maggots. This is like the Wagyu beef of the maggot world. There is also an option to uh, knock teeth out, which I think is fantastic. That's something you can do to your colonists, as I've talked about before. We might want to, you know, lobotomize the useless ones so that they just lie around being blood packs, basically. But obviously, the downside to that is they can't grow crops. But if they can't grow crops anyway, might as well just keep them in one place at one time, huh? Cut, cut off both the legs. Remove the pelvis, which is, by the way, something you can survive from. That would stop them moving around as well, I think. Anyway, um, what we want to do is work on the food issue, like the, the immediate sort of death that's approaching all of our colonists incredibly quickly that I can never seem to keep up with. Harvest all plants. Is all this ready to be harvested? Oh, it's capable of being harvested. That's not quite the same thing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, maybe we'll harvest like half this field. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's only do like uh, this much. Otherwise, you know, if we just let it grow for a couple more good days, we're going to get a lot more food out of it relative to that, and this should be enough to keep us going for that time being. So, Jilp, if we draft an undraft, should start. What are we doing? Going to cut some crops? No, we'll force him to do that then. Okay, nothing to worry about, team. I think we're going to get through this. That's already a lot of corn. Yeah, that, that will we'll be absolutely fine. So let's wake Alucard up. Oh, someone's been eating maggots. Who's been eating the maggots? Fess up. Come on. I know they're delicious and tasty and, and irresistible. Eight raw food. Does that count as maggot? Uh, demonetized. Surely it would just be like eight maggots. Um, I don't know who. Maybe we just fed it to the prisoners, which is fine. That's actually better than nothing, huh? No, I think it is the eight raw food. All right, cool. So I've actually woken Alucard up earlier there, like I was saying, so that we could try and get some breakfast cooked before or, or not. What What's he doing? Excuse me. Well, what do you what what'd you do with all that corn, my man? It's 53 in his backpack. Not doing anything with it. Just gonna go drop off a stone chunk first, huh? Why have we got stone chunks in here, by the way? Uh, granite. What the fuck have I done here? You fool! Get these chunks out of here. Good God. All right, that should be enough to actually start cooking some meals. Yeah, we've got a thousand, one thousand five hundred twenty-five. So we're absolutely fine for a while. Thank God we didn't need to uh, eat all those maggots. Those tasty, tasty maggots, which only the prisoners get access to. Oh, this is horrible. Okay, uh, let's go. Oh, oh, shit, no, wait, this is lavish. Okay, and then new food restriction. We're going to call this uh, prisoner. So, well, what are prisoners allowed to eat? Well, in my opinion, I think uh, we'll, get some, we'll get some maggots in there. Literal corpses. Although, no, that's a bit pointless because we can obviously turn those into maggots. Uh, we've got bone marrow. I mean, bone marrow seems like it's useful. Like, bone marrow is, like, apparently supposedly very good for you, so we'll ignore that one. Um, well, we've got raw food. Like, they could have, like, literal human flesh. But again, I feel like we've just... Slurry peed me. That sounds disgusting. I feel like we probably just want to, uh, save the maggots for the prisoners. I think that's it. So they're only allowed to eat maggots. Could cause us some issues. I guess we go for also, like, disgusting nutrient paste and nutrient paste as well. We'll build a dispenser. That way, I, I kind of want to build the whole kitchen growing system so that the prisoners have something to do. But we will build a nutrient paste dispenser to make it as efficient as possible, just in case they are a little low on food. Can we hook it up to this main area? I mean, that would be kind of cool, huh? If we do something like, um... You know, just so if they are hungry, they can quickly come and get their own food without having to worry about if they're a chef's awake or something like that. Um, well, we could hook it up anywhere. It really doesn't matter. Sure, let's go uh, production. Nutrient paste dispenser. Now, I've got to remember how these things work because they are kind of a bore. Like, so we do something like... Um... Oh, wait. It has to be refrigerated food that you put in the hopper, doesn't it? You have to refrigerate the back section of the dispenser. Um, Yeah, that could suck. We could put it there. I mean, that actually lines up perfectly with the dining room as well. If I put it there, then... How would we fill it up in a way that... Can you can you put a freezer and then have a hopper on top of a freezer so that it pulls food from the freezer or will that not work? We might have to get our colonists to manually fill this up. Not a big deal because we do have the stack limit size mod. So actually that's kind of perfect for this situation. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this thing down. Let's, let's get rid of just that for now. I'm not sure how much we have to remove. So I'll remove more than I think we need just in case. And then we'll get the nutrient paste dispenser down. That way if we don't have any tasty, tasty, tasty maggots for the prisoners, they can eat some just filthy, disgusting nutrient paste. Which is, you know, part of a well-balanced diet. But who would want to do that when you've got this disgusting, delicious, tasty meal waiting for you. Human-fed maggots. My god, he's so crazy. Completely gone berserk there. How will we ever stop him from... What's he doing right now? Growing rice. Unbelievable. Just really fucking... Fuck this rice. God, I hate this rice. Just so fucking angry as he's growing this goddamn rice, huh? Um, I, I feel like we've seen this before, and I feel like... Call me crazy on this one. The, uh, the, the mod might be slightly broken, or the berserk state might be slightly broken. Maybe it's just with prisoners. What happened last time? He went berserk before. 
It was one of our prisoners who was doing exactly the same. No, it was one of our colonists, wasn't it? Who was trying to also grow crops, and then our other colonists were taking pot shots at him for the shits and giggles. Not sure what the hell's going on with that. The only downside, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to forbid these. So, as we remove this, we want to make sure we don't get a prison break, obviously. I've, I'm guilty of doing that in basically every series. What's wrong with you? Goju's withdrawal. And then we've got him as well. He's he's hungry, apparently, despite the fact we've given him some tasty maggots. We should probably put those specifically in, like, the prisoner area. So what we'll do then is we'll go um, temperature. We'll go to a refrigerator. And we'll just sort of put it, put it in here, I guess. Uh. Just do something like that. There you go. Uh, let's get... Who's our daytime builder? Alucard, right? Um, oh, he's a warden. Shit. Right, so we obviously can't get over here for now. Jill will have to do that when he wakes up. But obviously, Jill, Jill will get it done in a few seconds. We'll keep the maggots in the... Fr frozen maggots. I don't know if that's worse or better than live maggots. I feel like a frozen maggot would be better, because when you bite into it, it's not going to be just like a fucking squishy gush of liquid, which is the name of my second channel, not on YouTube. So, I feel like like a maggot popsicle would be slightly better, huh? I don't know, it seems a little more palatable to me anyway. We'll, we'll freeze them some maggots as well. How the fuck did this happen? He just, just walked out. They're literally just fucking walking out. The, the locked door seemed to not affect them. Fantastic, okay. Um, get him, fucking capture him again, my man. Good God. You people suck. Okay, there we go. And then, uh, get, get Pickle over there. Come on. We can't lose our only other prisoner. We've only got two of the people, because we obviously want to recruit Rabby. Good God, we can't afford that. Right, I think maybe they're just allowed to walk through locked doors, which kind of sucks. It doesn't really make sense if you're forbidden it. I guess prisoners wouldn't give a shit what we forbid, huh? Yeah, no, they really don't care. I would also like to point out, he didn't actually go on a prison break. What he wanted to do was go and... Shit. Well, maggots for the maggot god. Uh, they, they don't actually try and escape. They literally just go and harvest our crops, which is kind of a pain in the ass. This guy's also berserk. This uh, uh, job sees him. What are you doing? I'm telling you to build the bone wall. And he's going off to... What the shit am I looking at? Stop. Force. That's funny. I thought the force button meant... Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're going to lose our other one now, are we? Huh? Capture Blackthorn. That's good. We've gone to real two steps back this episode, huh? Prison might look nice, but we've lost all our freaking prisoners. Picula. Tend. Tend to Blackthorn. All right, Joe, do you want to just go ahead and... Do you want to just go and haul, haul the other guy? Just get him out of here. Who, who's, who's around that can help Alucard? Get this, get this body out of here. So that should work, right? We've got a hopper hooked up to the nutrient paste dispenser. It's been a long time since they used these things. And we've also got a cooler as well there. So that should keep it refrigerated or at least frozen. And then any food that we put in the hopper, we could just stick like a thousand rice in there. Then we wouldn't need to top it up for friggin' ages. That way these guys are always fed and we'll never have that... But weird berserk, but actually not kind of berserk state ever happening again. Put down some flaws as well. I'm, I'm not that much of a monster. Thank you all for watching. This has been a great day for the colony, and it's been a great day if you like maggots. Uh, <laughs> what a weird fucking episode, huh? All we did was feed a man maggots and then kill him afterwards to turn him back into maggots. That's the circle of life. Lion King taught us that. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who are probably regretting making this series possible in the first place. A big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kurito, Atmosis, Average Gamer, 419. Bacon Kitten, Blurry Bunny, Sedini, Crazy Pack, Croces, Demon Daenerys, Donald, Escape, Facundo Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smug, Musk Ratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofellon, Pelvis Presley, Surthal the Swedes, Stannis the Manis, Toby Cruz, Tom Terror 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuus Bacchus, and Zazzy7011. Thank you all for your support at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. Uh, sorry, um, is all I'm going to say, because we are going to be naming prisoners after you guys. And if you get turned into tasty maggots, which are in turn up you know, fed to a person who's also turned into taste of maggots. You can't blame me for that. You cannot blame me. You can blame the following people for making this possible. Let's give a shout out as well to Asro, Anna Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Arachnid 44, Ben Trope, Betamus Max, Beta Valerian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Fred Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Doos, Gaz, GDWK Run, Gray, Haji Dumar, Hancock, I Swallow, Combe, I See the Great, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Jose, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Johnny No, Johnny, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Lusmi, Llewellyn Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Pansamu, Panther Pearl, Payback 137, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch Billionaire, Shari, Smirtworm, The Insane Pickle, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico 2. Can't wait to add some of you guys to this prison. I feel like I feel like this is gonna get me kicked off of Patreon, huh? Join me on Patreon and then I can feed you to my maggot pit.